Visual Studio is what we call an event-driven programming environment. That means we have blocks of code known as sub-procedures or event procedures that are linked to some event. When that event occurs, the code of that sub-procedure is executed. So in this example here, um, if we were to create an event procedure for the, the user clicking on the exit button, Visual Basic would create two lines of code for us. That would be the beginning and ending of our sub-procedure, or in this case, our event procedure. An event procedure or event sub-procedure is a specialized sub-procedure that responds to an event or handles an event. While Visual Studio would create those two lines for us, we would then code what we want this button to do in between those two lines. In this case, I've written the word me.close. This is a method that will exit our application. Let's take a closer look at this beginning statement of private sub btn exit underscore click. The word sub defines this block of code as a sub procedure. We will also talk later on the semester about having functions, and we would see then that this word sub would be replaced by the word function. You'll notice that some of these words are in blue. Those are keywords. Those are words that Visual Basic understands as having very special meaning. The word in front of sub is private. This is what we call an access modifier or an access specifier. And the two most popular uh, modifiers used there are private or public. You might think of this in terms of who has access to this sub procedure. If it's private, this sub procedure can only be executed by an event within the class or within this form. But if it's public, it could be ran by events or calls outside of this form. As an analogy, you might think of someone's private office. Not anyone can walk into a private office, as opposed to a, a city park, which would be public. Anybody can use that park. Another analogy you might be thinking about the stock of a company. Initially, stock is usually private. It is sold to very specific individuals. But if it's offered publicly through a public offering on the stock market, anybody can buy it. Then we have the name of the sub-procedure. As with all controls and objects, everything has to be named. And by default, when we create this sub-procedure declaration, Visual Studio gives it a name that relates to the name of the object, an underscore, and the event that is being handled. In this case, our object is named BTN Exit, and it's handling a click event. We can change this name to anything we want as long as we follow the rules that must start with a letter and can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. I could rename this Fred or John or Sally if I wanted, but BTN Exit underscore Click is a pretty good name. It's, it's meaningful and defines what event this is uh, responding to. Then we have a set of parentheses, and inside the parentheses is a parameter list. There are two variables as part of this parameter list, and we'll explore parameters much later in the semester. But for now, let's just say that there are two variables. One is called sender, which defines what object was interacted with by the user to cause this event to trigger. And then there's another variable called E, which stands for event arguments, which gives us more information about the event itself, maybe the exact location of the mouse, or whether certain keys were held down. And then we have the event handler. It's in the format of the keyword handles, and then the event itself. And the event itself is in a format of object name dot event. The object name in this case is btn exit and the event is click. So it's handling btn exit dot click. We can have uh, event procedures that handle multiple events and I can add more events at the end of this phrase by separating them with commas. So you see at the, at the bottom of the screen, I could have a sub procedure that handles btn exit dot click, comma, btn close window dot click, comma, btn send data dot mouse down. Not every event is a click, so there's a mouse down event that can be associated with objects. And so btn exit, btn close window, and btn send data are all names of objects, while click and mouse down are names of the events associated with those objects. I'm in Visual Studio, and I've got a Visual Basic application open. 
in which I have three fields named txt first name, txt last name, and txt phone. And I can enter a person's name. And their phone number and click add to list and it adds their name and phone number in this list box and we haven't talked about list boxes yet but list boxes are controlled allow me to, to contain multiple items one on each line and be able to actually select those items I, dub I double clicked on the add to list button which is named btn add to create the sub procedure and the end sub statement and then I wrote this code to, to be executed when the user clicks on that button. Real briefly what this code does is I have three variables FN, LN, and PH standing for first name, last name, and phone number that hold a string that's a uh, data type that can hold character values. And then for each one of those variables I'm placing the text that's in one of those text boxes into that variable. And the reason I use variables here, it allows me to shorten the names rather than to always have to use txt first name dot text. I can now refer to it just as fn. So I'm getting those three values from the text boxes, putting them in three variables, and then I have a statement here that adds the last name with a comma, with their first name, a space, and their phone number. This is called string concatenation. We'll look at that here a little bit down the road. But I'm going to add all that to the items of my list box named LST names. Then I have three lines here that are simply clearing each of those three text boxes. And then this line, txt first name dot focus, puts the focus in the first name text box, and that's where we'll see the cursor flashing. I have in the design mode here also a button called clear fields. I'm going to end my application. And I want to create a procedure for that clear field. So a couple ways I can do that. One is I can simply double click on the button. And I get a private sub end sub statement. And we can see that it's going to handle the click event of BTN clear. Now what I want to have this button do is basically clear the three text boxes and put the focus in first name. So I'm going to copy those lines of code. and then paste them here in my procedure and let's just test it so if I have a name in here typed in some data and I press clear fields it clears those three text boxes puts the cursor in the first name field but nothing's been added to my add list that's exactly what I wanted to do. I'm going to go back to my code and delete that. Let me show you another way to do this. In Visual Basic, and this does not work in C Sharp, but in Visual Basic, we have a drop down list at the top left that shows us all of our controls. And I can go find BTN Clear. And then on the right hand side is a drop down list of all the possible events associated with that control, with that object. I'm going to choose Click. And there is the same private sub in sub bookends for our sub procedure handling btn clear dot click. And once again, I could paste in my code and it would run. Okay, I'm going to delete that and show you a third way to do this. In the design form window, I can go to the properties and there's a button here for events. It's got a little lightning bolt on it. So I'm going to choose my clear field button click on events and there are there's that same list of events that we saw on the right hand side top drop down I'm going to choose click now I could come over here and choose a procedure that's already there so if I wanted to share a procedure from another control I could do that what I'm going to do here is simply type in btn clear underscore Plus the enter key, and now I have that same private sub end sub. I didn't have to name it that. I'm going to delete it, come back over here. And for events, let's just name it uh, clear fields. If 
press the enter key. Now I have a sub procedure named clear fields, but notice it's handling the same event, btn clear .click. And once again, I could paste in that code and test. And just to so see this work, I'm going to just type in some dummy text here, click clear fields. It does the exact same thing. So the name of the procedure is not important as long as it's linked to the particular event. The other thing I like to have this, this application do is when the cursor is flashing in one of my text boxes, it can be kind of hard to see, especially if you have a lot of text boxes. So what I like to do is set the active text box to be yellow. So when it gets the focus, it's going to turn yellow. When it loses the focus, it's going to turn white. So a couple ways I can do that. In the design mode, if I double click on a text box, it's going to give me an event of text changed. That is the default event for a text box. Well, that's really not what I want. Now I could change that event. I could come back here and rename this to sort of event. I could type in, let me show you one thing. If I type a period here, in the IntelliSense, it's going to show us all the events associated with TXT first name. One of those is Got Focus. So I'm going to choose Got Focus. And uh, I'm going to also change this name here to Got Focus. And what I want to have happen is TXT first name dot back color going to be set to color dot yellow. Let's run our application. So when we run the application, that text box is set to yellow because it's got the focus. Now if I tab out of it, it retains the yellow color even though it's lost the focus. So we now need to also code a lost focus event. So I'm going to go back to my code window choose TXT first name and then for my events I want to choose lost focus and my code is going to be almost the same here so I'm going to turn it white so now when I run the application if I tab out of the first name text box it's going to turn white now I want this one to turn yellow as well and white when it loses the focus and the same with the phone number. I could code each of those separately. However, I can add events. So I'm going to come back to my code here for got focus. And I can either type TXT last name or I could choose it from the IntelliSense. I'm going to choose it, press a period. It's going to show me all the events associated with TXT last name. In the IntelliSense, I'm going to choose Got Focus, type a comma to separate it from the next event, and that's going to be for TXT Phone, period, Got Focus. We're going to do the same thing here on the uh, event procedure for Lost Focus. TXT Last Name, dot Got Focus and txt phone dot so it's the lost focus not got focus change this to lost focus now here's the problem if I were to run this we'd only see the the first name text box change because that is the control that's being changed here in our code so we talked a little about the sender value referencing the object that was interacted with. So I'm going to replace txt first name with sender. I'm going to do the same thing down here. So now whichever object of those three is executing this code, it's going to change the color. Let's test this. So if I tab to last name, it now is yellow. Tab to phone, it is yellow. And if I tab back to my first name text box, it gets the focus again, turns yellow. 
That is how we can handle multiple events with the same sub-procedure or same event procedure.